Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 11. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look at bringing our gun model, we're going to deal a little bit more with animation, we're going to add in uh, another camera and we're going to deal with subtitles a bit more and some voiceover. So we've got a lot to cram into this tutorial. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So let's go into our objects folder and let's bring in a gun model that we're going to bring over here because this guy is going to be pointing a gun at the guy in the chair. So drag and drop this gun model that you can get on the website for free. Head over there, downloads and assets, GTA series and tutorial number 11. So if we go into the gun folder and bring in this gun somewhere around here, it is pretty large, but we can just reduce the size to fit the scene properly. So we need to place this gun in a relatively decent position near where this guy is going to be holding. So what do we need to do now? Well, we need to deal with another animation for this guy to get him into a pose where we can actually be aiming the gun. So to do that, if we click on him and click on idle here, and we have a couple of different things. So we have um, right here, fire one pistol. So let's take that animation out of there. So hold control, press D. And let's have wrap mode as once because we don't want this to be repeated. We just want him to point the gun. That's all we want at the moment. So we only want the animation to occur once. So when we've done that, drag and drop onto our guy right here. And it's contract killer two, remember? So drag and drop. And that'll make it the default animation, which means that this guy, by the time we look in with the second camera, will now be pointing his gun towards this guy in the chair. So we just need to realign this gun a little bit so it's actually in the right place. So it's a case of bringing it roughly uh, to the right position. And we can actually do that by pressing play. And then clicking on our scene view again and we can see roughly where he's going to be holding the gun so we could move it into position and all we really need to do is play around with the settings here a little bit maybe get it just the right place so it looks like it needs to go up just a little bit and it needs to go forward just a little bit as well so you would just need to get that position of the gun just right so it he is holding it and then you just need to make a note of whatever the position is right here and then when you stop you just need to put the gun in that position so it was about 3 1 uh, 1 point six three eight not 11 1 and on the Z we have 2.442 I think should do it so you can see the gun is hovering but I've said it every tutorial so far I think what the camera doesn't see doesn't matter uh, so I'm going to save that right there. Just make sure that gun is in the right place. Uh, I'm not going to change it or anything, but I may tidy up the hierarchy soon enough because it is a little bit messy. But we, we will be doing that before we finish this scene. Um, so if we create a third camera now, we're going to be able to change our camera to actually be looking at this gun while he's pointing it. And the idea is, if you've not already guessed, we're hiding this guy's face as much as possible, just you know, to give it a little bit of extra oomph to the game. So let's take uh, this whole scene, section of the scene right here and create a camera. So game object, uh, camera, and let's rotate to minus 90. And we need to make sure that we're looking at roughly this area here with the guy pointing his gun. So I'm going to have the camera about there. And what we're going to do now is change the field of view. What the field of view does with the camera is it effectively gives it the ability to zoom in and out of where you're looking. Obviously, a larger field of view, you can see more from the camera. A lower field of view, you would see less from the camera. So if we look at this now, we can see that the field of view on the camera preview right here appears to be fairly decent. If we just move it up a touch, we may need to test out how this looks. And to test it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the first camera. So as this camera right here becomes the default camera and we should be able to see how this is going to look. So I think what I want to do is probably bring the camera back a bit and rotate it that way just a bit. 
and see how it looks now. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time doing this. You guys should probably refine your game as much as you possibly can. Because at the end of the day, it is your game, not my game. I just show you the mechanics. You need to refine it. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit across just a little bit. Press play and let's see how that camera looks now. Down a little bit. I feel like I've taken too much time on this already, so whatever this looks like. Okay, I'm going to stick with that. Okay, so I'm going to F2 to rename and let's call this one third camera. And that is going to be off. So let's turn our first camera back on. And I'm going to bring the third camera up below the second one so we have it in sequence. So now what do we do? Right, well, we need to create this sequence now because we need to activate that third camera. We've also got those subtitles and uh, we want to add voiceover, don't we? So let's go to our scripts and let's start with a voiceover to bring ourselves to this point. So let's go to the intro scene and right click, create C sharp script. And let's have this A03 uh, voice subs. So I will warn you, the uh, voiceover we're going to use is something I've recorded myself doing awful accent and I've just modified it a little bit. But if you guys actually want to create identical voice recordings to this, if you, you know, you're a bit of a professional or you know, you, you've got a good voice, please let me know in the comments and we'll see if we can actually get you in this tutorial series. So how do we do this exactly? Well, it's all about a sequence of events, just like we've done previously. So we need to declare a couple of variables which are relevant to just the subtitles and the voiceover. And if you remember, we've already got right here in our canvas, subtitles text. That's going to be the first thing we need to reference. So let's get rid of void update. We don't need it. And this annotation at the top, we don't need it. And let's go public game object. Uh, sub text and at the same time I'm only going to add in two voice lines to this because we're going to add more in as we get further on but they're going to be public audio source and we'll call it um, voice line 01 and public audio source voice line zero two semicolon now i just called these something simple like that you can actually call them whatever you want you can call them something more relevant which is probably actually a good idea so let's start the sequence of events i enumerator let's have intro subs oh close bracket open curly bracket so basically, we need to time ourselves now how far until we display that first voiceover and uh, subtitle. And it's going to be relative to this cam switch right here. So we're going to turn this on after five seconds. Cam switch. And yep, so we read that. So seven seconds. And let's go to move. And... Is that the one? Nope, that's to move our character, isn't it? Um, yeah, okay, so we're going to wait for seven, eight seconds, I think, and then we will display our first line. So on here, yield, return, new, wait for seconds, open brackets, eight, semicolon, and at this point, we're going to have sub text dot set active true. And because we're going to be dealing with changing what those subtitles say, we need to declare that in the namespace using unity engine dot UI semicolon. So before we set it true, we should probably set the text. So it's going to be sub text dot get component and in spiky brackets text 
Uh, oh, we'll close bracket. Dot text equals. And I'm actually going to copy it directly from here. So you asked for this, George. And semicolon. <clears throat> and now we get set active. So now we're going to wait for. Um, how long is it going to be? Probably a second. But we can always customize it, change it if we need to. Return new wait for seconds one. And after one second, we set the subtext to blank. So effectively removing any subtitles. At that point, what we'll do is wait for, gosh, what's the next line going to be? What should we have as the next line? Uh, I, I did kind of plan this out. So Lorenzo, I swear it wasn't me, is the next line. So after one more second of waiting, we can change the subtitles to say uh, Lorenzo, I swear it wasn't me. And that will display for probably about one and a half seconds. So wait for seconds, 1.5 F, because it's a float, obviously. And after that, set it back to blank. So we've got the text in place. Now what we need to do is actually uh, have the voice play. So after the first line, we'll have voice line dot play. And same again here, voice line 02 dot play. So it's a case of just aligning your subtitles with your audio. That's all it is. And in void start, we need to start coroutine and then the name of our coroutine, which is intro subs and save. So you can see what's happening here now is we're waiting until we pan to that second camera and then we start playing what we have. But what we're also going to do is switch to that uh, third camera, I should say, which can be done via, hang on, it's just there we go, just compiling there. Uh, it can be done via our cam switch. So after two seconds, we set the credits on, which is fine. After that, <clears throat> we set the second cam on, first camera off. So after another probably six seconds, we're going to set the third camera on, which means at the top, public game object third cam semicolon and that means third cam dot set active true in fact maybe i should do it less than that six seconds seems a bit long i'm thinking maybe four uh, so we set camera active that means set the second cam dot set active false <clears throat> and save that script so we just need to set all this up now. So we need to initially go to our sequence holder here and add in the third cam, which is or that one right there. Let's add our voiceover. So what I'm gonna do is just drag and drop this script over here in the inspector panel. It's another way of adding a component. Uh, so subtext is going to be our subtitles text and I'm going to turn it off to start with. Next, we need to add in that voiceover. So let's go to our audio folder, right click, create folder. And we'll have this as voice. And in here, we'll create another folder. And we'll just call this 01 intro. So just to say, first scene, the intro. And I'm gonna bring in these two lines. So we're gonna hear my voice modified, doing awful accents now. And I'm going to add these to an audio uh, source file right here, roughly where the camera is. So game object, create empty. And it's pretty much in the right place. And I'm going to F2 and rename audio voice. So within here, we have some more empty game objects. And the first one is this one. Rename line zero one and turn off play on awake because we only want to call it when we uh, refer to the script 
So next, hold control, press D to duplicate, rename it to line two. Oops, if I can see it, my mouse skills better. And drag and drop onto there. So now we have those two audio lines, which should play our voiceover. So now in our sequence holder, we just need to attach those over there. And let's save our scene and press play. Our fingers crossed, this plays out quite nicely. You asked for this, George. Lorenzo, I swear it wasn't me. Okay, so there we are. Yep, so that was my terrible, terrible voiceover. But what I think I might do is actually... Uh, I may change just a little bit because maybe four is too short. Maybe five because what I want to happen, I'm going to tell you guys what, what we're going to do now. What I want to happen is there's going to be another line where uh, Lorenzo, our main guy right here, says, you squeal on horse face, then you sleeping with the fishes. Thank you, Malware Bites. I know there's an update. And after that, um, we have George in the chair saying, Lorenzo, please. And then bang, the gun gets fired. And then we take it from there. So we're going to be doing all that in the next tutorial because next tutorial, guys, we're going to finish this intro sequence. We've learned a lot. And I mean, seriously, we it may not seem, but we, we have learned a lot so far. So we're going to be able to build our huge open world a lot easier now. We've got all this knowledge. So like I say, next tutorial, going to be all about finishing this intro sequence, compiling it, bringing things together. And then after that, we're going to make it look nice and cool. We're going to make it look awesome and move on to a city. So all that's coming up pretty soon. So guys, what I'd recommend you do now is if you want to use my awful voice recordings, please do. It's good for testing, good for playing around with. If you want to submit your own to me, you know, if, like I say, if you're a professional, please, please do. And yeah, you just get your scene looking decent now you know just kind of work on it build it and uh yeah i'll see you in the next tutorial guys thank you very much for watching